morning. It's the last first day of school for President Joe Buck. And are you starting out today? How pretty you look. He's term limited out of the school board presidency. My name's Joe too. After eight years of steady progress. You all right? In a school system that desperately needed a leader. I'm glad you're here today. And got an unexpected one in 2006. Parents entrust their dearest thing to us, the thing that is most important in their life is their kids. Dean Buck has spent his entire life worrying about teaching students. Are you folks new moms? <laughs> but the 35,000 in Savannah's public school system are especially dear to him. This is sad. I, uh, I've loved these eight years and uh, I'd really rather not think about it being the last first day of school for us. Joe Buck was born and raised in tiny Thomaston, Alabama. My phone number was eight. My grandfather was known as Mr. Big Joe Buck. My dad was known as Mr. Little Joe Buck. And I was known as Mr. Little Joe Buck's boy. <laughs> <laughs> the family farmed, but his mom was a teacher standing at an American crossroad. The day the school, the white school integrated, all the white kids walked out and all the teachers walked out, but two. And my mom was one of those that said, African-American kids need to know how to diagram a sentence too. The lesson became a part of who Joe Buck is. Well, he taught me a long time ago that integrity is one of those words that stands on its own. You don't have a lot or a little integrity. Either you have it or you don't. Little Joe Buck's boy went to Auburn. My mom said I majored in fraternity and minored in yearbook. And then went into the Navy, which took him to San Francisco, where he ginned up enough Southern charm to sweet talk a pretty girl. Met a Yankee from uh, Rhode Island, and uh, she had followed this Navy guy out there, but it wasn't me. <laughs> I was smitten by this Southern boy with this uh, accent this lovely southern accent, and he was a, a handsome naval officer, and I was a city girl from New England. They said it wouldn't work, but here we are, 47 years later. The Navy took him to the waters of Vietnam, but brought him back to attend Florida State for an MA. And then he and Maryland came to Armstrong. At latter 60s into, into the 70s. At Armstrong State College, he became the root of the new Southside campus. He poured his life into Armstrong. Mm -hmm. um, it was who he was. Armstrong became home for us. Us expanded to include the Reverend Dr. Joseph Buck IV and Sarah C. Buck, now an assistant principal. We have a teacher and a preacher we're pretty proud of. Dr. Joe Buck, hello my brother. How are you? Good to see you. Joe Buck flew the Armstrong flag everywhere. He became the face of the college at Rotary, at Civitan, at United Way. Joe was unique in that he fully did that, head of the whole spending process, chaired the board, and then came back and said, I want to do the fundraising side of it too. It helped really connect Armstrong to the community over those 36 years. Every step of the way, when you thought about Armstrong, most people thought about Joe Buck. Nowhere were his skills more prominently displayed than at Leadership Savannah, where he developed the unmistakable traits of a leader of the highest caliber. You know, he walked the walk. He was active himself. He was at Armstrong. He was all over town. Everybody knew him. Everybody liked him. His charge is to take that group and start coalescing them from 40 or 45 or 50 different individuals into a group. That skill will come back around as little Joe Buck's boy rises from Director of Student Affairs to Vice President, mentoring thousands of pirates along the way and creating a discipleship of followers who would do anything for Dean Buck. At length, 36 years, Armstrong craved something new. It became apparent to me that it was time for me to go. Joe went through a very difficult time. He could not retire. He was not done yet. It was then that a group of community leaders approached him with an off-the-wall idea. He came home one day and said, they want me to run for the school board president. 
He triggered all the skills that his life at Armstrong had helped him develop and put together a kitchen cabinet that reflected his values and his vision. We sat down in the living room floor. It was Bill and Malik and myself, and we just um, had printouts of people we knew and what he should do. After a long, distinguished career to then take that experience and put it back into Savannah and recycle all that experience so that many other individuals could, could participate and benefit from that and open up opportunities so that individuals can actually make a contribution back to Savannah really stands out for me. The field was crowded and formidable. The campaign went to a runoff, but the runoff gave President-elect Buck a clear mandate. Determined. Uh, I think uh, confident that I can, can accomplish what I promised to accomplish as I ran for this office. You always want, sincerely, your best and brightest people in public office. That's, that's what democracy is all about. And Joe had the perfect ingredients for that. Getting elected turned out to be the easy part. There were so many parts broken that we were struggling to find out what and where do we start the work. We were about to enter into the first East Blosh uh, campaign. I think that spoke very well of, of, of Joe's relationship with the community. The school board had been a fractious, often frozen, governing body. That all changed. So you've got eight others and there are eight other agendas. He is sincere in everything he does. He is always inclusive to everybody he deals with. He is sensitive to every feeling, every issue, every nuance. Over his eight-year tenure, he guided the board and created a team that served the mission that they developed together. You know, I, I always speak about all means all. All is not defined as some. Joe lived that. Which brings us back to where our story started. The schools, the children. Except it isn't really the same picture at all compared to when Dean Buck first took the president's gavel. We've made a, a tremendous difference in the academic progress the district has made. We've made a tremendous difference in the graduation rate. Uh, we're extremely proud of that. Dropout rate was 13 percent. Now it's less than 3 percent. 6,000 uh, students that we didn't have in 2005 are now back here. These last eight years have been just an, a remarkable experience. I didn't think anything could be any better than Armstrong. And this has been, in its own way, Armstrong was preparing me for this. And now, the doctors, Buck, have earned the right to do some things for themselves. You know, Marilyn and I tap dance a lot together. Uh, and the kids grew up having fun with life. Now, do you guys literally tap dance? Yes, but, but we're not doing it for this. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Note to Dean Buck, never underestimate the resourcefulness of an editor who graduated from Armstrong, especially one who knows firsthand the immeasurable contributions of Dean Buck to the community. People like him and they know he's sincere and they know that the community is the most important thing to him. He makes a relationship with somebody, it sticks. When Joe gets up at like four in the morning, 4.30, and he claims he goes to the gym. I don't know about that because he's always talking about to me on my accountability system, well, what is the return on your investment? And I look at his waistline and I don't know what his return on his investment is. That can-do spirit, that's what he leaves us all with. I mean, we all, may we all have the Joe Buck can-do spirit. There has been no greater teacher for Bill Kelso um, than Joe Buck. And every time I interact with him, I learn something new. And for that, I'm forever grateful. But you get an opportunity to see his humanity. And when I reflect back on that first meeting we had, the seriousness was about giving humanity an opportunity to develop, to grow, to mature, and to be better than what we currently are. Life is short. I, I know that, and every day it becomes even more apparent to me. Um, but you only get to come around one time, 
and you really ought to leave it better than you found it. And you really ought to take the, the chance to laugh as much as you can and have as much fun with things as you can and love. I love God, I love my country, I love my family, and the folks in Savannah. I'm looking forward to see what, what he's gonna do next. Dr. Joseph A. Buck III is a laureate in the Junior Achievement Savannah Business Hall of Fame.